And it is the hour, straight up 10 o'clock, so I wish you a, a wonderful good morning uh, in this Lord's house on this somewhat overcast but blessedly cooler Lord's Day. <laughs> uh, welcome to worship this morning. I'm Susie Thomas. I'm our lead pastor here at the Farmville United Methodist Church, and we have three different congregations to welcome this morning. First of all, I'd like to welcome those who are listening on WFLO radio. Uh, it's Radio Sunday, and so welcome to those of you hearing us on the radio this morning. Welcome as well to those of you in person, um, and thank you for coming out when you could have been doing so many other things. You got out of bed, you had breakfast, and you came to this holy place, and I know that you will receive a blessing. And then finally, to our congregation who's watching and listening this morning on Facebook Live, welcome to you, Congregation of the Internet. And your uh, online host this morning is Reverend Lindsay Blakely. She will not only welcome you with um, a bright good morning hello, but also um, ask you questions during the course of the service and sort of interact with you. So don't be shy about interacting back. Um, this is real worship. So, well, once again, it is so good to be with you in the house of the Lord this morning. I have a, just a, a few announcements to share with you, but before I, I launch into a uh, those things for the good of the order. Just kind of want to acknowledge that um, it is not a particularly happy world right now outside our doors, is it? Uh, you may have come this morning carrying unseen burdens. I think we all carry them around with like a, a turtle shell on us, um, the burdens of, of just our everyday living. But then there's also the, those things that are going on in our world over which we feel we have so little control. Um, just need to mention the devastating earthquake in Haiti, which now appears to be uh, headed for um, a hurricane as well. Um, the fact that the Taliban is now in control of the nation of Afghanistan, uh, the coronavirus is raging throughout the south and fires are raging across the west and there's so much more. Um, but in coming to worship this morning, I wanna say that you've made a choice to take your personal and our collective pain before the Lord and before God's people in a place where we share one another's burdens. And I pray that you will be moved today to prayer or to action and that God might offer us all a balm for our troubled souls. So here are those things I promised uh, for the good of the order. First of all, what is that wooden thing on the lawn <laughs> between our church and the Wesley Foundation? Well, that is a blessing box. If you looked on the, our Facebook page, you'll know that um, the blessing box is a, a way to bless our community, not only our Longwood students, but also uh, members of our community who frequent this area, shall we say. The blessing box is a joint project of Wesley and our church, and when it's ready, it will be filled with um, a good variety of non-perishable foods, as well as hygiene products, and some small books and some Bibles and devotional books as well. And it, as the name implies, it's to be a blessing for the community, and it will bless us in turn as we, that is you, keep it filled. So if you're so inspired to um, shop for some items for the box, you can just bring them to the church office, or you can, if you see the box is running low, stock it yourself. So um, we will hold a service of dedication for our blessing box after uh, our youth paint it and give it, uh, give it some bright colors. So September 12th, Sunday, September 12th, should be on your calendars already, I trust. It is our fall kickoff, and uh, if the virus permits, um, we will gather for a Sunday school sort of pep rally right here at 9 o'clock. All of our Sunday school classes, as well as those interested in joining a, a Sunday school class or a small group. Then at 10, we'll come to worship for some very special uh, music. And then after worship, weather permitting, we will gather for uh, some refreshments on our front lawn. So um, put the 12th on your calendar if it's not there already. I'm looking forward to uh, kicking off another year here at Farmville UMC. So now with all of that said, it is time for that um, deep and refreshing breath. So let's breathe in the air of the morning and the sweet peace of our Lord Jesus as we ask God into our hearts as we prepare to focus on worshiping him, our triune God, this day. We will be thinking in our message time about how we might waste time with God, as um, un-American as wasting time may sound. That is what we'll be thinking together about this morning. So let's take that moment now and breathe in a deep peace of Christ.
And now I'll ask Dave Wagner to lead us in our call to worship. Please stand as you're able and join me in the call to worship. Come, give thanks to the Lord with all your heart and soul. We come rejoicing our God's many blessings poured out on us. God's works are great. We delight in learning about them. Respect for God and all that God offers to us is the beginning of wisdom. With gratefulness, we shall praise and honor God all our lives. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Ring. Well, I think if you asked many Christians what their favorite hymn is, that many would say that it's the hymn that we will sing as our opening one this morning, Be Thou My Vision. It may be yours as well. So let's stand and join our voices together.
may be seated, all except for the children. Come up to, uh, front, if you would, for your special time with Mr. Dave. Well, good morning, everyone. How are you doing? Have a good week. Are you back in school? How many are back in school? How many go to school maybe a little later? How about you out there? Back in school? Yes. Well, today, I thought I'd teach you a little Sunday school song that a lot of people like to sing. It's called, Oh, Be Careful, Little Eyes. I don't know if you know it, but I'm going to teach you. And I'm hoping, well, actually I'm expecting the congregation to join in, especially with the motions. It goes like this, with one little practice first. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. For the Father up above is looking down in love. So be careful, little eyes, what you see. Can we do that? Then there's a second verse. Where there's, right, there's about 40 verses, but we're only going to do three. Okay? You, we do ears. Okay? Then we do feet, and there's a stomp. After the feet, I'll tell you when to stomp. Okay? Here we go. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. For the Father up above is looking down in love. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. Ears. Oh, be careful, little ears, what you hear. Oh, be careful, little ears, what you hear. For the Father up above is looking down in love. So be careful, little ears, what you hear. Oh, be careful, little feet, where you go. Stomp, stomp. Oh, be careful, little feet, where you go. For the Father up above is looking down in love. So be careful, little feet, where you go. For the Father up above is looking down in love. So be careful, little feet, where you go. Very good. I think I even, we even had some participation out there, didn't we? Uh, well, as the school year starts and our lives get busy, this song reminds us that God wants us to choose to use our time wisely. God is happy that you and your family are here today spending time in church with him and your church family. He's glad when we spend time reading and studying with him in the word of the Bible. He's glad when we sing his songs and learn about his love. Then we can take our feet and go and be his love in the world. This song also fits with today's scripture reading. Paul writes a letter to the church in a city called Ephesus and to us at Farmville United Methodist Church saying, be careful how you live. Do not live like fools, but like those who are wise. Make the most of your time to understand God and what he wants you to do. Then you will be filled with his spirit as you sing and live with God's love in your heart. Can you pray with me? 
Heavenly Father, we are thankful for Paul's letter. Moms and dads, family, and church family that wisely teach us about Jesus. So we may go and be his love in our daily life. Amen. Well, thanks for coming up. Well, I'll take one personal moment before we proclaim God's word to thank God for his wise, very wise counsel and for his bond in our, our Patty and I's relationship. We celebrate tomorrow of marriage in 41 years. So, uh, my brothers will be sending me a congratulatory card and Patty a sympathy card for putting up with me all these years. I know that. Well, if you would, please join me in the prayer for elimination. Living God, help us to see, so to hear your word, that we may truly understand, that understanding we may believe, and believing we may follow your way in all faithfulness, seeking your honor and glory in all that we do. Amen. Well, the scripture reading today comes from the letter to the Ephesians. St. Paul writes to the church at Ephesus. Be careful, then, how you live, not as one unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time, because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery. But be filled with the Spirit as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melodies to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Dave, both for that children's message, which we could probably do without my message after your message. It's often that way with the children's sermon, isn't it? And for your reading this morning. Once again, friends, let us pray. Oh God, open our hearts to your word, a word that passes swiftly and faithfully from the ear to the heart and from the heart to the life. Amen. You know, I think all preachers have their little little quirks and fascinations uh, and interests that inevitably make their way into our sermons. And one of my own fascinations, as I'm sure you will pick up on uh, over the time we have together, is with signs. Yes, signs, any kinds of signs really, but mostly street signs, signs in front of businesses, hand-lettered signs in neighborhoods, yard sale signs. I just love signs. And lately, I've honed in on a particular category of signs, namely quirky business names. My current catalog of favorites includes, this one is uh, to be found on West 3rd Street, Common Sense Criminal Defense. I love signs that rhyme, those are the best. And on East 3rd Street, the rod and staff welders. Mm, must have been inspired by the 23rd Psalm. Uh, and there's one genre of sign, though, that we don't seem to have a lot of around Farmville, but which were omnipresent back in the big city of Baton Rouge, where we live, Britt and I. It may be a Virginia versus Louisiana thing, a cultural thing, I don't know. I am referring to no loitering signs. I don't believe I've seen a single no loitering sign anywhere around Farmville. Maybe, maybe Richmond, I don't know. Um, but they were just about everywhere in Baton Rouge, particularly 
all over the campus at Louisiana State. LSU was plastered with no loitering signs. I guess it must have been a big problem with all those college students. Uh, they were on the fronts of the government buildings downtown, businesses, particularly convenience stores. A lot of loitering must go on out in front of convenience stores. I don't know. But there was one business <laughs> that really took it to another level. And this was a, an auto repair shop in um, a particularly funky part of, of New Orleans. Um, and it, it had a sign hanging in front of the auto repair bay that said, if you're not working here, don't be hanging here. Uh, <laughs> so I guess that told all those potential loiterers and hangers, uh, no hanging, no hanging, unless you're working. All those warnings indicate, I think, that loitering is somehow a problem, don't they? Maybe more so in the Deep South than here in Virginia. Are folks more indolent down there? I don't know. <laughs> Tropical temperatures and 150% humidity may sap the strength and induce an inclination to loiter. I don't know. But when in doubt and perplexed, I turn, well, I turn first to the Bible, of course, but then I turn to the dictionary. And the word loiter, it turns out, has a very interesting etymology and series of different connotations that it can mean variously to linger aimlessly in or about a place, as in to loiter around the bus terminal, or to move in a slow, idle manner, to loiter on the way to work. And finally, it can mean to waste time or to dawdle over work, as in he loiters over his homework until one in the morning. So we gather from all those definitions that loitering isn't a good thing. Aimlessly, slowly, idly killing time, hanging around, possibly even looking for trouble. Idle hands, devil's workshop, and all that. Loitering goes against our grain, I think, as hyper-fast-paced Americans. Think about how we refer to time. Time is money. So while you may spend time, you mustn't waste it. We are not a people given to undirected contemplation, to siestas or sabbaths, or even to vacations that last longer than two weeks. That may verge on wasting time, heaven forbid. Well, the Apostle Paul, or, or someone writing under his name, as was an accepted practice in the ancient world, is thinking about how we use time, as Dave said, in this letter to the church at Ephesus. This letter is an extended encouragement um, for, to this very diverse church to model their human relationships on the way that Christ uh, dealt with them or Christ related to them. He says, be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time because the days are evil. Make the most of the time, Paul says, because the days are evil. And by that, I think he meant... Um, People at that time thought that Jesus' second coming was to happen really at any moment, and so there wasn't a moment to waste. Well, as far as wasting time is concerned, the little microcomputers, where's mine? It's here, ta-da, that we carry around in our purses and pockets give us so many opportunities to waste time. Candy Crush, anyone? Animal Crossing? Our laptops and iPhones and all that are probably among the most useful and yet the most time-eating devices ever conceived, aren't they? Paul, in this letter, could have been talking about all the technology that surrounds us when he encourages us to redeem the time, redeem the time, and not to waste it in pursuing the deeds of darkness such as drunkenness and debauchery. Surely God does care about how we use the moments and the days that have been given to us. But I want to suggest that when we put ourselves into the presence of God, as we have done by being here in this moment, there is no such thing as wasting time. God never posts a no loitering sign in the kingdom where he reigns, which is, in fact, within us and among us. God, in fact, I think loves it when we loiter with him. I do know what it means to loiter, not that I have ever done it myself, of course, but I have seen people loiter. I'm always mindful of what uh, our forebear, John Wesley, told his Methodist preachers about spending time wisely. He told us that we are never to trifle away time, neither spend any more time at any one place than is strictly necessary. Wesley, of course, was a man on a mission to spread the gospel across England and then across America. And in this great work, you really could not afford to linger. He rode hundreds of thousands of miles on horseback. 
because souls needed saving, after all. So I myself never, ever hang around in, say, coffee shops. No, no, no. Whenever I'm at Uptown Coffee or at the new coffee mill on 3rd Street, I am not hanging out. I'm either meeting someone to talk or, or I'm working on a sermon, but I do notice sometimes that there are other people loitering there, I'll tell you that, lingering over their cappuccino and sometimes just staring idly out the window. This may be the only time, really, that those folks allow themselves the idle pleasure of loitering before they head back to the pressures of their jobs or their homes. Coffee houses are third places, that is, a place in between the office and the home, and they're one of the few places left where it's still A-OK -okay to hang out, and sometimes you can even do it without buying that $2 cup of coffee. Usually they won't throw you out if you just want to sit, and I, I'm a big coffee shop fan. You know another place where you can loiter or lollygag or linger and lounge without feeling guilty? Right here in this sanctuary. Now, this kind of loitering I will happily admit to. One of the perks of being a pastor is that I get to spend much of my days very, very close to this house of God. And sometimes during the workday, I'll climb the stairs up from my office and come here. And I'll just sit in this atmosphere that's so full of prayers and hymns and creeds and baptisms and sermons and weddings and funerals and just so full of worship. And here I do loiter, lingering aimlessly, moving slowly, if at all, wasting time with God. Speaking of worship, what is worship anyway but a royal waste of time? Why are we here right now when we could be doing so many other things? Getting stuff done around the house, reading the Sunday paper all the way through, weeding the garden, balancing our checkbooks. We are not here in this moment on Sunday mornings to get something done. We are here to worship God, to praise God, to offer ourselves up with God, and we do that with lavish inefficiency. Lingering over hymns, listening to messages just like this, just kind of lolling here in God's presence, and even hanging around after worship is over for a few moments to rekindle friendships after that long year of isolation, which we're still not fully over yet. Worship, it seems to me, is at the heart of the way that we love God in Jesus Christ. And everything that we're about here at Farmville United Methodist Church springs from what we do here on Sunday mornings. The genuineness, the strength, and the vitality of this church and its people all begin right here, as it has at the corner of High and Randolph Streets since at least 1832 or so. In our worship, right here, lives are transformed. Souls are healed, relationships are mended, the bread of life and the cup of salvation are offered and received. God is sought here, and God is found here. And oh, we need God so much now, more than ever, I'd say. What exactly happens in Christian worship? Well, an efficiency expert might find that nothing particularly efficient happens. Nothing really happens in worship, but everything happens in worship. It's holy loitering. The writer of the letter to the Ephesians encourages us to be filled with the Spirit as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. All of that, the being filled and singing and giving thanks, takes time. Worship cannot be rushed. Our modern mania for efficiency may have given us the one-minute manager and even, mm, this pains me, the one-minute parent. Ugh. But let's hope we never see the one-minute worshiper, you know? Good worship, true worship. Worship that changes lives takes time. Stuff that comes out of the gumbo pot or the Brunswick stew cauldron is always better than whatever pops out of the microwave, isn't it? This sanctuary was consecrated to the worship of God by the people who built it in 1907, I think. And it's an ideal place to lift our hearts up to God in this beautiful environment with the light coming through these windows with iridescent and jewel-like colors. But we can love God in other places other than here in the church. We can love God anywhere, of course, in our cars, in our homes, at work, out on a walk with others or alone. Wherever we find ourselves, God is waiting there. 
And we can let God love us wherever we turn, whenever we turn our hearts to prayer and wait for God in the stillness of our souls. Remember, in God's kingdom, no loitering signs are not to be found. Rest is encouraged. Hanging out is more than permitted. And Sabbaths are ours for the taking in our lives with God. And I think the interesting thing about loitering with God is that in its own way, it is actually productive. We are making a very good use of time when we hang out with God. When our hearts are filled with the love of Christ, a desire to extend ourselves in service to others is the natural outcome. Faithfulness in study and prayer and worship leads to faithfulness in service. Do you think if we all took the time to just loiter with God for a while each day, that our lives and our church and even our world would be changed? I'm about to offer you a little prayer now from Psalm number 46 to take with you today. And here's a modest proposal to go along with it. What if you were to pray this simple prayer every day for a month and then come back and tell me what happened? <laughs> could holy loitering even be transformative? This may be a little change that could change a lot. So we'll try something a little bit different now. I'm going to slow down for a moment and love God together in this moment. I'm going to ask you to put down whatever you may have in your hands, uh, your iPhone, grocery list, your knitting, or whatever it is. Open your hands in your lap like this, if you would. This is coming before God with an open-handed and receptive posture. The word loiter has an interesting origin, and it originally referred to a beggar, a beggar. So come as a beggar now with open hands. Close your eyes and take a deep breath and listen as Marge plays for us. Marge. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am. Be still and know. Be still. Just allow yourselves to loiter in God's love and find rest there for your tired souls and be transformed. Amen. So let us join our voices now in a hymn of praise to the Holy Spirit, light and fire divine. Let's stand now and sing together, O Spirit of the living God.
may be seated. And would the ushers come forward now as we take up this morning's offering. Let us pray. Lord God, you have blessed us so that we may bless others. We thank you for the ability to give to your church and its missions, and we pray that you will multiply the potential of this offering, just as Christ multiplied the loaves and fishes on that day so long ago. In his name, amen. You may be seated unless you'd like to say hello to the people next to you by passing the peace of Christ. <laughs> it's always a surprise, isn't it? Our time of greeting is getting longer. <laughs> uh, I served a church once where they were so into the greeting time that they had to ring a huge bell at the front of the church to get everybody to sit down again. <laughs> well, in our joys this morning, the altar flowers um, given uh, today, uh, on the altar today, are given to the glory of God by the family of Jody Hogan in her memory and in remembrance of her birth on August 18th. They are absolutely beautiful and brandy. It's so wonderful to welcome uh, the rest of your family here today, so welcome. 
It was a joy to walk around town yesterday in that infernal heat and watch as young people and their parents heaved mattresses upstairs into the houses all along High Street, uh, along with students who are moving back in. And our prayer, and I know Hamden, Sydney, students are as well. Our prayers are with all those who are getting ready for class, whether it's their first year or their last year, uh, for the returning students, for their teachers and staff, and for their families who are saying their goodbyes. May God bless all who teach and all who learn this year. Today's ushers are Scott Harwood and Regina Hux. Thank you both. And it is a blessing to have some new personnel on our soundboard. Unless you all are in the habit of turning around and seeing who's up there, you may not know um, that we have a regular crew up there. Uh, Chris, uh, Chris Cook, Britt Thomas, and Jeff Postens are our regulars along under the direction of Josh Blakely. But we have three new additions, and I'm proud to name them. They are Jackson Hicks, Jim Kimbrough, and Jason Tibbs. They'll be doing a rotation on the soundboard and managing the live stream, and they are the unsung heroes uh, of worship. So thank you, guys. And uh, yes. <laughs> And in a moment of personal privilege, 29 years ago today, a, a guy from ne New Mexico married a girl from Maryland, and here we are in Virginia. Happy anniversary, Brit. Here's to 29 more years. All right. So in our concerns this morning, we lift up for our special prayers, condolence, the family of Joan Glenn. Uh, as you may have heard, Joan went home to be with the Lord this past Thursday evening and her interment will be private at the Veteran Cemetery in Amelia, but we will hold a celebration of Joan's long and wonderful life here at uh, Farmville UMC on September 4th at 1130 in our fellowship hall. Just to lift up a few things, words, let them stand in for our concerns, um, lifting up Afghanistan, wildfires, the Delta variant, COVID-19, the earthquake in Haiti, and a hurricane bearing down on that beleaguered country and on our Gulf Coast. What can we say to all this? What can we say to evil, whether human-made or naturally caused? There may be no real answers to the question that we all ask, which is why. But to the questions of who and how, I think there are more reliable answers. And the answers are with God and together. So let us pray. Lord of the universe, Lord of our lives, when evil darkens our world, give us light. When despair numbs our souls, give us hope. When we stumble and fall, lift us up. And when doubts assail us, give us faith. When nothing seems sure, give us trust, and when ideals fade, give us vision. When we lose our way, be our guide, that we may find serenity in your presence and purpose in doing your will. And now, as our Savior taught us, so we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Once again, in the category of favorite hymns, uh, our closing hymn today, Great is Thy Faithfulness is one of my own. It has uh, sustained me in some difficult times in my life, and perhaps it's been that sustaining him for you, or could be. Um, so let's stand now and sing it together.
Receive now this blessing, people of God. God, go before you to show you the way, above you to watch over you, below you to lift you up, and always within you, so all can see the light of Christ shining through. Go now in peace to love and serve our God and God's people. Amen. <laughs>